Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about the support build of Nidhogg, which is a new hero class coming this month. Nidhogg is an offensive support hero that can buff, heal, resurrect, and save her teammates from death while also dishing out magic damage that can debuff enemies. We've already discussed in detail all the skills of Nidhogg in my previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, I have the video link down below. This time, we'll talk about which stats, runes, gears, cards, and upgrades are needed to prepare your Nidhogg character in advance. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, let's take a look at the important stats to upgrade. For attribute coin distribution, prioritize maxing out Vit since it is the primary stat needed for increasing max HP, HP regen, and physical defense. In addition, every 10 Vit boosts Nightfall Streamer's damage by up to 1% due to the related star rune. Next, Int should also be maxed out as it increases magic attack, max SP, and SP regen which are needed to boost Nidhogg's offensive power. Higher Int is also vital for survivability as it increases magic defense and the healing amount of life force. Then, a lot sufficient points on decks for reducing the variable cast time of skills. Nidhogg's skill with the highest variable cast time is Nightfall Streamer with 8 seconds so you need to ensure that you have enough dex and VCT reduction to insta-cast it. As for the remaining points, you can allocate it on Lock which is important in PvP for boosting crit rest and reducing the headshot chance of gunslingers. Other stats that are significant for improving survivability are skill and auto-attack damage reduction, physical and magic damage reduction, element, race, and size damage reduction, and resistance to abnormal status. In addition, healing increase, healing received, and holy damage will affect the healing amount from life force for sustain. Up next is discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, hero classes only gain attributes when nodes are activated and there are no nodes that modify the effects of skills, making it really straightforward for new players. As a simple guide, just focus on upgrading the nodes that grant dark damage, ignore MDEF, percent magic attack, healing bonus, max HP percent, movement speed, physical and magic damage reduction, physical and magic defense, vit, int, dex, and raw magic attack. For advanced runes, here classes are heavily rune dependent due to the new mechanics of upgrading the core passive skill where in the second line of all 3 star runes and 3 s runes should be activated to max the core passive. The skill runes for Nidhogg are as follows. First, we have the star rune for life force which adds scary elation effect when healing. It's necessary to aim for a value near 100% chance for protecting your party. Second is a star rune for Flower of Salvation which adds a healing effect at the end of its 6 second duration. A high heal value near 50% of max HP will greatly benefit your team. Third is the S rune for Flower Guardian which restores the HP and SP of your Dragon Clan by 0.5% to 2% every second. This additional healing effect when inside the circle for 8 seconds would be nice to have. Fourth is the S rune for Queen of Dragons, which grants additional 1% to 30% movement speed to its buff. A high movement speed is essential for evading attacks and supporting your team. Fifth is the Star rune for Nightfall Streamer, which increases its damage by 0.1% to 1% for every 10 vit you have. Having high vit will not just boost your damage, but also improve the shields you will generate when dealing damage. And last is the S rune for Ragnarok, which grants a self buff that will boost your M pen by 1% to 20%. However, it's not a reliable boost as it only lasts for 6 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. It's recommended that all 6 runes have activated second line to trigger the auto nightfall streamer when you or your dragon clan teammates deal damage. You can improve your chances to get the required runes by purchasing the premium rune gift box every week. And if you're planning on topping up BCC Weekly to buy rune boxes, you can use fast and reliable service to get cheaper BCC via Smile One. Smile One is an international game top up center that has partnered with hundreds of game developers, including Ragnarok Mobile, allowing them to offer BCC and monthly premium at a lower cost than what is charged in game. Topping up from Smile One's website is extremely easy. Just click the link below, select your country and server. Enter your character ID and choose the package you want, and then pay via one of the available payment partners. Here in the Philippines, I can simply pay online via GCash and receive the BCC instantly. 
please do check out the link below to learn more about SmileOne's pricing and payment options. The top-up service they provide is incredibly fast and secure so I highly recommend it. Up next is dive into the gears, cards, and other upgrades. First for weapon, a plus 15 unlimited is the best in slot for boosting Nightfall streamer's damage, thus providing higher shields. Other alternatives if going full support are either Stardust Dragon Staff or Staff of Vitality. Your weapon should be enchanted with High Status Resist or Tenacity 4 and inlaid with a Spasher Star card. For offhand, you may use either an Ocean's Bestowal or a Ritual Ancient Mask with 24% elemental damage reduction, enchanted with Tenacity 4 and inlaid with Snake Demon Gorgon's card. For armor, I recommend wearing a Tidal Armor or Soul Beckoning Armor with 20% elemental damage reduction, enchanted with high HP% percent and status resist, and inlaid with any of the following cards depending on the enemy you're facing. Examples are Wolf Grandma Star card to prevent abnormal status, Angeling Star card against AARM and most elements, Fire or Wind Reflect card against Genus, Slayer, Gunslinger, and Nogu, and Ghost String card against Chronomancer. For garment, you may use an honor shoulder badge, comfortable coat, or leather trench coat with 12% skill damage reduction. If you're using Stardust Dragon Staff as weapon, another good option is a Grey Elf's Manteau due to their set effect which grants 20% physical damage reduction. Your garment should be enchanted with High Status Resist or Divine Blessing form and inlaid with any of the following cards. For foot gear, you may either use an Inheritor Boots with 6% max HP or refined war boots with 6% physical and magic damage reduction. It should be enchanted with high status resist or divine blessing 4 and inlaid with Edga star card. For accessories, I still prefer a plus 12 or higher survival ring since it grants a huge increase in raw HP per refinement and enhancement level. A good substitute among the ancient gears is Necklace of Oath with either 6% max HP or 6% demi-human damage reduction. Your accessories should be enchanted with Tenacity 4 and inlaid with Osiris Star card. For headwear, there are lots of options to choose from, but here are my top picks for each slot. For head, use Actual Bew to protect your gears from equipment destruction inlaid with a Dark Illusion Star card to insta-cast Flower of Salvation. For face, a plus 6 Eastern Dragon Visage would be my top choice for additional 16% skill damage reduction. For mouth, get a high refined Angry Snarl for boosting demi human damage reduction. Lastly, for back and tail, get a high refined Midnight Stars and Amethyst Creature respectively for a huge boost in skill damage reduction. Take note that you may also use GVG Rental Gears, God Artifacts, and 6v6 team competition gears for specific events. As a support, it's a good idea to prepare alternate equipment and cards so that you can easily switch items based on the enemy lineup. In addition, you should also ensure that all your gears have high refinement level for refined physical and magic reduction, high enhancement level for additional physical and magic defense, and high reinforcement level for additional max HP. As for other upgrades, prioritize the following guild buffs, Oracle Mirror Extract, and Ancient Relic. Also, don't forget to invest in max HP, def, and mdef stats in the handbook and get multi-jobs that grant fit, int, luck, and dex. Finally, let's discuss the general battle preparation and skill setup for Nidhogg. For the skill bar setup, just place all 6 active skills in the manual skill bar and Nightfall Streamer in the auto skill slot. For consumables, these are the ones that can help improve your survivability. Before starting, buff first your primary DPS with Queen of Dragons for boosting all attributes and movement speed. When your party is near the enemy, cast Ragnarok to temporarily convert their race into dragon for 6 seconds. After that, you can start attacking enemies with Nightfall Streamer to grant HP shields for yourself and Dragon Clan and for a chance to clear negative effects. Hitting enemies with Nightfall Streamer will also lower their HP recovery, attack, magic attack, and MDef. To protect yourself and your team, cast Flower Guardian and enter its AoE to reduce the damage you receive 
in spam life force to constantly heal Dragon Clan teammates and for a chance to get the effect of Kiri Elison. When caught in a sticky situation, don't forget to cast Flower of Salvation for a 6 second group fate prey effect and to resurrect all nearby allies who died. When near death, make sure your teammates are nearby to trigger the Nightfall Redemption passive which restores their HP and SP to 100% and revives dead teammates. Alright so that's it for my full support Nidhogg build guide. I really hope this video has helped you in preparing your Nidhogg character. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any question or suggestion. Alright that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.